Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I want to talk about an article that's been getting a lot of attention, and the headline is Semi-Automatic Assault-Style Rifles to be Used for Sydney Island Deer Kill. Now if you've been watching this channel, you already know my feelings on the term assault style. If you have to say something is something style, it's not that thing. A beef style burger is going to contain lots of things and none of them will be beef. So what's happening in this particular instance is that Sydney Island has a deer problem. There are deer there that are an invasive species. They're not sort of naturally there. And so the government would like to wipe them out and put this to a vote, which apparently was a 52% in favor vote. So I'm not really going to get into the, the basics of whether it's a good idea to wipe out these deer. That's sort of how democracy went, even though it was a slim margin. But really, I'm going to talk about the methods, because what's happening is they're using what's described in the article as restricted assault style rifles chambered in 223 and along with suppressors and standard size magazines, which in Canada are prohibited. They're banned. Now, they say that these are restricted rifles, and I think that that's almost certainly an error because there aren't that many restricted 223 semi-automatic rifles left in Canada. And it's far more likely that these are in fact AR pattern rifles, which have been banned in Canada. So I'm guessing these are actually banned rifles. And not just banned rifles, but rifles that our government has said have no business on our streets. They say these are weapons of war with no legitimate civilian purposes. And yet, here they are, going to be used for legitimate civilian purposes. So this is kind of an interesting thing here, especially because uh, Canadian citizens are also banned from using standard capacity magazines. These are going to be 30 round magazines because they're considered too big to have in a semi-automatic rifle. Further, we're not allowed to use suppressors. And there's all sorts of reasons why they're going to be using these things in this instance. Now, some people have said, hey, why, why not just hunt these? And this isn't really a hunt. It's a cull. Uh, the company in question, which is uh, White Buffalo Incorporated, that's who's being brought in to actually do this cull. Um, they're not there hunting. They're trying to wipe these things out. So they do try to save the meat in order to like donate to, um, you know, to food banks and so forth. So the idea isn't to waste it. But at the same time, this is not like an ethically, you know, there's no sort of ethical management here. There's no tags. There's no conservation of the species because hunting, you typically want to maintain the population, not eliminate it. And this is really just pest control. So pest control is, of course, going to have very different principles that apply to it. But here's the thing. The argument that, okay, well, maybe these things are reasonable for pest control. You know, that's why they need the big magazines and the suppressors. Um, you know, they're saying, oh, hunters don't need these things. Well, pest control is actually a pretty common and legitimate use for firearms as well. A farmer who is shooting coyotes is engaged in pest control. Wild pigs are a problem now in Canada. And similarly, a farmer who's trying to eliminate a sounder of wild pigs is not probably doing it because he just really loves the taste of very gamey pork. It's because he's trying to eliminate them. Now, I'm just going to go through something else here. We're going to talk about White Buffalo's sharpshooting protocol because they're the way they're going to be trying to eliminate these animals is by shooting at them from vehicles, uh, including land vehicles, helicopters, and potentially, if necessary, boats. So here is their sharpshooting protocol. It says, subsequent to a decision by the landowners and the State Wildlife Management Agency to implement a controlled deer reduction using White Buffalo Incorporated, the following procedures are used. So one, prior to initiating any field activities, i.e. going out and shooting things in the wild, uh, the target areas and surrounding properties are thoroughly surveyed using digital aerial images followed by field confirmation. Field confirmation is important because those images are always out of date. You want to know if there's like a playground suddenly somewhere. <laughs> 
By knowing the location of every occupied structure and areas of human use, we are better able to work safely, discreetly, and efficiently. Bait sites are selected with the involvement of the landowners and the cooperating state agency. Each site is selected based on safety concerns and deer activity. This is another difference between hunting, because typically you're not allowed to bait deer for hunting purposes, but it's a good idea for, for a cull, for pest control. We conduct field operations during hours of lowest human activity, which is a euphemism for they do this at night, because that's the, air, that's the hours of lowest human activity. In addition, during the removal operation, we search intensively for people and non-target animals to avoid mishaps, i.e. they're going to try their best not to shoot grandma or your dog. Deer of all ages and sexes are harvested. Again, they're trying to wipe them out, so it's, it's free for all, right? However, adult does are prioritized, and that's just for reasons of, you know, reproduction. You want to, <laughs> you know, you want to focus on that. Deer are shot from a vehicle with a rifle during the night with the aid of spotlights. Some deer are shot over bait from a tree stand with a rifle during the day or at night. Night vision equipment and suppressed firearms, only in states where they're legal to possess. Now, Canada is not a place where they're legal to possess, but the government's going to give them a pass on this. Um, are used to expedite field procedures and to ensure discreet operations. Now, this is a perfectly reasonable thing for them to do, right? If you're out there trying to shoot the deer, maybe you don't want to bother the neighbors. But we don't allow this for somebody who's, for instance, engaged in target shooting or who is engaged in pest control on their own property. Uh, for instance, a farmer who's like, I really need to keep the coyotes away from my cattle still isn't allowed to use a suppressor, even though the only reason for doing so might be to not bother the neighbors. People think of suppressors or silencers as this, you know, thing used by criminals, but in actual practice, criminals almost never use them. And the reason why is because they add a whole bunch of length to the gun, and criminals really prefer concealable weapons, not, not big, uh, long, bulky things. So, during suburban deer reductions, there will be continuous open communication between community members, municipality officials, and White Buffalo Incorporated to keep people well informed regarding field activities to avoid conflicts. When in doubt, never shoot. I mean, that's a good rule for firearms at all times, right? That's, that just makes sense. All deer carcasses are transported and dressed with the highest degree of discretion. So... Basically, they're not throwing a bloody deer carcass into the back of a pickup. They're going to try to make sure it's not going to bother people. When desired, we are willing to be responsible for the disposal of all byproducts and transport of deer carcasses to a USDA inspected facility for processing and subsequent donation to the needy. Now, it's obviously not going to be going to a USDA inspected facility because this is Canada. But this makes it clear that we're talking about an American company. In fact, um, my searching seems to suggest that they're located in Connecticut. So all of these things are things that we say we don't want in Canada, or at least, sorry, our government says we don't want in Canada. They say we don't want American style, you know, firearm use. Except when we do, like when it's convenient, we'll actually import it. But, you know our own citizens have to have to wake up the neighbors if they're going to be shooting at, you know, a coyote or something like that. So this, uh, they also note here, and this I'll just uh, sort of mention, uh, they indicate that they use uh, specialized bullets. And in particular, they're, what it appears to be is that they're using frangible ammunition, ammunition that breaks apart uh, when it hits something. And that's a good idea because if you're shooting at something from a helicopter, you don't want to ricochet, especially if there's a miss. But this, I think, is, um, it's interesting on all of this because the government manages to arrange this in what seems to be fairly short order. Certainly, my business firearms license has taken more than two years to get, um, get going, but they seem to have gotten this going in a very short period. I'm just going to note, I don't think there's anything unreasonable about the gear they're using for the task they're trying to accomplish. Um, certainly, however, if they offered the same opportunity to local hunters, I suspect that they would 
I suspect that they'd solve the problem pretty quickly. But they're saying, okay, well, we got to bring people in, these specialists in, we can't do it ourselves. But just the very fact that they're bringing these people in and giving them a permit for this really confirms that there are appropriate civilian uses for these items. You know, they're not going to war with the deer. Um, the deer don't shoot back. This is just pest control, and pest control is a very commonplace activity uh, by Canadian farmers. It's just one of the sort of recognized uses of firearms. So the frustrating thing on this isn't that it's happening. The frustrating thing is that they're not allowing the same thing for the regular population. And in particular, I'll point to suppressors. Uh, suppressors in, are very much a safety feature. Uh, most people are going to be using suppressors just for the reason to prevent hearing damage. Um, if you talk to a lot of like older hunters or older target shooters, a fair number of them have sustained hearing damage over the years. And it always makes most sense if you're trying to prevent noise injuries to prevent the noise at its source. There's all sorts of circumstances where you can sustain hearing damage uh, just from ordinary use. People say, oh, well, just throw in earplugs. Well, earplugs aren't perfect. I personally like to wear two sets of earplugs. And part of that is that I've had the experience of being in a shooting stage and your earplugs or your, you know, the earmuff style uh, things get jostled out and don't provide protection or the in-ear uh, ones manage to wiggle their way out and fall out. And at that point, you're potentially at risk because this is a problem. Uh, so protecting the user, but also just making things easier on people around. There's all sorts of places that you could perhaps uh, cite a range. And in fact, there's been a number of ranges that have ended up having to close because people move too close to them. And maybe that range could have stayed open if they were able to say, okay, listen, uh, we're just, you know, everybody's got to use a suppressor in order to keep the noise down. As mentioned, um, I do criminal defense and I have yet to see a situation. I mean, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of people who were busted carrying a handgun illegally. None of them had firearms licenses, which are required for legal gun owners in Canada. But also, none of them had a suppressor. Um, it just doesn't happen. The charges that you typically see for suppressors are people who got curious and decided to order one. That's a bad idea. Don't do that. Ultimately, I'm not annoyed that this call is going on. I mean, there's probably very good reasons for it. What annoys me here is that we've got a government that will say that there's no legitimate civilian uses for any of these items. And then also say there's such an important legitimate civilian use for these items that we need to make sure that they're there and make sure that these contractors that we're bringing in have access to them. If there's really no legitimate use for these and if they're weapons of war that have no place on our streets, then tell your contractors that they got to use bolt action rifles and no suppressors and five round magazines. Because that's what you're saying is reasonable for anyone else doing pest control. Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. Please like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to see more content. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Lembus for the Elf, CCFR, Canada's National Farm Association, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. And at the $20 level, Lindsay Metcalf, Larry Kalniak, Kyle Fox, Here's a Coin Legal Witcher, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich, Vicky, and Dorky Dane. Thank you as well to my $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching. Hope this is armed with knowledge. See you next time.